Oh, Al, already teasing me. Well, let's begin. Welcome to DBL. Travis Kelsey is revealing what Taylor really thought about meeting his brother Jason for the first time last Sunday. So if you haven't seen, this is what happened. There's Jason. He ripped off his shirt, cheered along with the crowd during the Chiefs Bills game on Sunday. Now on their podcast, Travis said Taylor absolutely loved Jason, even though he was shirtless throughout the game. But Jason's wife, Kylie, apparently wasn't a fan of his antics watch. I said, I'm taking my shirt off and I'm jumping out of that suite. And she said, Jason, right. don't you dare. I was like, hey, I'm just letting you know what's happening. I'm not asking for permission. I'm doing this. And she was already telling me to be on my best behavior because we were meeting Taylor. This is hilarious. I was like, Kylie, when I met you, the first day I met you, I was blacked out drunk and fell asleep at the bar. <laughs> this is part of the charm. This is part of the Jason Kelsey charm. I want to make my best first impression. This is my best chance. My best first impression is the worst impression ever. So I, I, I could just build Set from that, that point. Nice oh, yeah, exactly. What do you think, Jeff? You're shaking your head. He's got a point. Not a great one, but I mean, if you start at the bottom, you, there's no place to go but up. So I do agree with him for that. Listen, I think listen, he's semi-retired. It looks like he's going into retirement. He's got some options for being an announcer. The podcast is going well. I'm talking about Jason Kelsey. And I thought it was just like an almost famous moment. You know what I mean? Like, I'm retired. My brother's playing out there. We played our whole lives. Now it's time for me to kick back and relax. Get a little silly. I'm down with it. I do silly things like that. So I'm all for it. I liked it. You know, him picking up that girl at the end to see Taylor Swift. I know. That was cute, too, so I'm for this, but I, Al might think there's some inner demons. Maybe. Yeah, you think so? He's having, like, an identity crisis, in your opinion? I, this is, this is my whole point. Uh, when you look at the situation, it looks like, oh, you're just having fun. You had some drinks. You might be going into retirement. That was more than a few drinks, and it seemed very deliberate. If your brother was about to meet Anthony for the first time, and you walk in your house, and your brother's shirt is off, and he's screaming, holding a little random girl, would you just say, this is my brother having a good time? That is, you're that taking, is an you're act. You're taking this that is a deliberate Other thing. Other than the random little girl, yeah. which can completely be taken out of this story, right? that pretty much is how my brother and my husband met. <laughs> 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 but Albert, what if this is his persona? <laughs> I, I, I mean, listen, you might know his persona I, more I, than me, but I think of like Burt Kreishner, right? Yeah. Burt will go take off his shirt, have a good time. Some people just, that's the way they let loose. Yes, and I've known Burt for I years. Know. And We're talking about a comedian, what, by yes, the way. Yes, and uh, Burt is, he likes to hang out, but he's not always naked half naked he he that's kind of like on stage and I feel like this situation I feel like we have a man that is probably entering retirement seeing his brother get all the shine his brother probably going to the Super Bowl shout out Peter and I think that it's hard for him to now look and be like who am I now my brother's with Taylor Swift I'm, he's happily married but like I think he wanted a little shine because I feel like he's trying to re-identify who he is Erica what is that face Al I don't think I ever thought I would say this to you. I'm the I smartest think, man you ever met. <laughs> I think we've overcorrected, my boy. I think it's a thing. Like I, it's a, the little things are the things, Erica. I, and I say that. First of all, let me just say, my of boy, course, is don't a term even. Of yeah, stop. Yes. Don't okay. do that. We're not yeah. doing that. Yeah. Uh, things are the things. The yeah, little, they are the things are the things. The, the, <laughs> the little it's things. It's overcorrected. Okay. I, I really, I, I don't want to live in a world where fun has just died. And I, I understand there are reasons, and you have been so transparent with your journey and your evolution and sobriety and all those things. So I do not want to have that conversation and minimize you and your story and people that identify with you. However, there are people out there who just want to let loose and alcohol is a part of that. And I think that we need to normalize being okay with having a moment a lot of people go through shame spirals about like over drinking and overindulging and if that's an issue for you I believe that's one thing but I don't want to automatically project issues onto other people simply because they're intoxicated in public but, I think oh, people no. are allowed to be intoxicated in public he took a shirt off and jumped out of a window and and so what <laughs> I mean the first time so I what? met my in-laws I puked at the border okay 
okay? What? Things happen. What? <laughs> like, okay. I, I did. You just I dropped did. us right into that story. Okay. But I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'll just say this. It's, it, it pertains thoughts. to my situation. As I looked at it, somebody used to drink and hang out with entertainers that really drank, not performatively drank like that is. The real drinkers don't do that in front of people. We go to a bar and we finish the evening. That's that's for performance. That was like, for look sure. at me. For so sure. that's what I'm saying. I think yeah. he wants that attention because it's gone. He's running out of tunnel and happen anymore. It's gone, but all right. Poor it's Al. literally okay. gone. <laughs> He's not playing anymore, probably. I know, but he has a popular podcast. All right, we're oh, going to move that's on. That's the same as playing for the Eagles. <laughs> we're going to move on. <laughs> the cast of uh, the new season of Ryan Murphy's show, Feud, Capote versus the Swans, came out to the premiere last night in New York City. Now, the women, including Demi Moore, Naomi Watts, Molly Ringwald, Diane Lynn, Chloe Sevigny, and Calista Flockhart, all look very swan-like, wearing a mix of black and white. Demi Moore, by the way, who's 61, looks fabulous. Look at this dress, you guys. A uh, sequin swan with feathers out. It's not saying much, cause just because it's January, that's my dress of the year so far. I'm, I'm that right there with dress you. dress is yes. unbelievable. Erica, do you agree? Yes, I yeah, do. I, I love Thanks it. Thanks for asking. Yeah, and we I, wanna, got, I wanna, <laughs> want your approval. We got Naomi Watts <laughs> carried around this bejeweled swan purse. That's, that's, I that's Sammy. That's Sammy. That's I Sammy. love that look totally, with the gloves. Totally oh, pull that off. Fabulous. Molly Ringwald looked swan-like in this black and white gown with a large white bow and seemingly carrying a bird head. We need an explanation. Yeah, because you see her she hand look great. underneath the bird's We don't need an cheek, explanation. The, She's standing next chin. to a picture of a swan. No, but it's not a shadow. Sure. It's not a picture. There's a shadow you, there. Do you think she's carrying that around? Yeah, I think it's like, like a, a boom paper, box. I think no. it's a paper mache. <laughs> I think it's a paper mache. No, it was part of the backdrop that you could take pictures yes. with. Oh, I that's think. what you're being That's told. what I'm like. Okay, well, cool. And Calista <laughs> Blockhart, who wore this black and white gown, she also told E.T. that an Allie McBeal reunion might be in the works, but she doesn't know much about it. Calista reunited with some of her Allie McBeal co-stars, by the way, at the Emmys earlier this month, and said she'd be up for rejoining the cast. Is there a big push for this that I'm unaware of? No. A big push for the Ally McBeal reboot? I don't think so. I think there was a little nostalgia at the award show, and then I think that was it. I haven't heard anything about it before or since. I don't uh, want to get you guys' opinion really quickly. With these shows that are rebooting 20 or 30 years later, do you think it's tough because the society is changing, how we look at them is different? I think Cheers could probably do it. But even, you know, I don't, I don't know if Ally McBeal, like, that would still hit the same. I, I, I've said this since the beginning. We just, we need new stories. I know. There's new people. The, the world's new. Can we yeah. have... I, I, <laughs> but I'm Barbie was that. the biggest movie this year. So I understand yeah, but they that, reinvented but it's not, the right, it's not a reboot. Like, this is like, we pause, and then life has happened, the world has changed, and then it's like bringing these people, like these characters back. What I'm saying, we don't necessarily need to bring these characters back because there's new ideas and new stories and people who weren't even around when some of these shows were at its peak and they have a totally different view of the world. But sometimes you do get a big fandom who get together and they miss, like I know Supernatural came back because millions of people wanted to see, see Supernatural come back. We saw Devil Dare come back, which we're gonna have Mark Summers on the show soon, stay tuned, because a lot of people wanted that nostalgia. I'm getting messages that they want Pastor Paul to have a spinoff. Yes, <laughs> you're definitely not getting any of those messages. <laughs> Shout out to Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul, spinoff? Maybe you should make the time. You know what's I, remember I the played line. this guy, Pastor Paul, in a movie a long time ago, but Alex, we always talk about making a spinoff, but Pastor Paul turns evil, and he he's like, you know, so he's not, there is he's one not a pastor works. anymore. Oh, no. so there's one in the works, people. <laughs>